Barnaby Jones, starring Buddy Epson, also starring Lee Merriweather, with guest stars Belinda J. Montgomery, Christopher Stone, Dabney Coleman, Patricia Smith, Peggy McKay. Tonight's episode, Blind Terror. doing right now. He's eating his heart out. <laughs> okay. Here you go. It's never the babies who are scared. Only their mothers. Hope I haven't kept you, Mr. Jones. Hello, oh, Miss Bennett. Uh, lovely girl, your daughter. Of course, you realize that the way things are today, the police have their hands full. Must be a lot of worried parents looking for missing daughters. Michelle is over 18, isn't she? 21. Mr. Jones, I'm somewhat of an authority on parents who panic, and I'm not one of them. When is the last time you heard from Michelle? Friday. Well, there's only Tuesday. She usually call in over the weekend? Yes. I phoned her apartment. I checked with her friends. She didn't show up for work over the weekend, and she didn't go to school yesterday or today. She live alone? No. Poor Amy. Uh, it's her roommate. She had a terrible fall down the stairs, and she's in the hospital right now. Did you try to contact Amy about Michelle? The last time she saw Michelle was Friday morning in their French class. Now, all of this is just not like Michelle. Boyfriend? Oh, so many, I lose track. Number one right now is Eric... Uh, Somebody. Mr. Jones, I'm really worried half to death. Miss Benedict, when I was learning how to swim, I used to worry some fears about how deep the water was underneath me, how far it was to the bottom. But you and I know that that's nothing to worry about, as long as you keep swimming. You're a very persuasive man, Mr. Jones. I just hope and pray you're right. Benedict, Miss Benedict. Oh, I'm sorry. You'll have to excuse me again. Okay, okay, Jim. Practice another dive. Come on. Hey, that's it. All right. Easy. Okay, go easy. And the boy is open. So the last time you saw Michelle was Friday morning at your French class. That's right. And that's the only class we have together on Fridays. But you came home that night expecting to find her in the apartment you shared. Yes. For all I know, she was there. Didn't you go inside the apartment? 
No. I remember scrounging around in my purse for my door key as I was going up the stairs. When I got to this top step, I found it. And then I, I must have tripped or something. That's the last you remember. I'm afraid so. In fact, now I've lost my door key. In the fall, I guess. Michelle was dating a young man named Eric. Uh-huh. Eric Rome. Eric trains animals for TV commercials. He rents this old place from my uncle out in Saugus. I'd like to talk to Eric. Michelle has his number in her address book. She keeps it in a drawer under the television. You won't mind my going through your apartment, Amy? No. Mrs. Selby or her son Argus will let you in. They manage the building. I guess you two can meet properly now. This is Amy Partridge, Mr. Jones. Thank you. Amy, uh, would you say that this was a good likeness of Michelle? I guess nobody told you, huh? Hi, I'm Barnaby Jones. I called... About the key. Yeah. I got it right here. Here, uh, I'll show you the apartment. Left your door open. For the phone. Mother's going shopping. Mr. Selby, oh, I... Oh, Argus, please. It's a name I'm very proud of. It means the watchful guardian. From Argus. The guardian with a hundred eyes uh, in mythology. Greek, wasn't he? You're right. The guardian with a hundred eyes. You're the first person I ever met that knew that. Well, I had a friend who sold sunglasses during the Depression. He used to have this dream. Uh, he kept dreaming that Argus was his steady customer. Argus, uh, you didn't happen to find any of Amy Partridge's keys, did you? Well, a lot of things spilled out of her purse, and I replaced them. And the purse went to the hospital with Amy. There's no keys, though. How long did I live here? Almost a year. Fine-looking girls. Well, I think Michelle is, uh... I don't know. She's too flashy. You know, it's terrible about Amy being blind. I wonder why it always happens to the good ones. You liked Amy. Well, we never went out or anything. Michelle? No, I, I never asked her. I mean, guys stand in line to take her out. Lots of guys. Maybe that's where Michelle is now. Argus, did the girls bring in anybody to do the cleaning? No, they did it all themselves. They really kept the place spotless. They vacuumed it twice a day. It's funny, they vacuumed right past the shoelace. It's not mine. I only wear slip-ons. You know, loafers. You know... You know, there was never even a dirty dish in the sink. I really have to say as much for Michelle. You know, I, I've been thinking about going visit Amy in the hospital. That's our phone. You make yourself at home.
find anything? His shoelace was broken. It was new. Hmm. Well, guess who was nosing around the girl's apartment? Michelle's boyfriend, Eric. That's right. A car fitting your description, complete with the number 47, belongs to an Eric Rome. Information courtesy of the Apollo Car Club. He uh, races on weekends in the amateur division. Amy said this Eric trains animals for TV commercials. Mm -hmm. yeah, he lives with his furry friends out in Saugus. Michelle's boyfriend. Small world. That's because you don't have to drive all the way out to Saugus. You know, this doesn't surprise me half as much as finding Amy's keys inside the apartment. You said she never even unlocked the door. Yes, yeah, she was pretty definite about that. I wonder why. Looking for Eric Rome. What for? I don't think we were properly introduced the last time. Uh, in fact, I'm looking for uh, Michelle Benedict. What last time? Can we talk about Michelle? Okay. Ark should be a Mrs. Eric, you know, two for every species. Uh, there isn't. Thought you wanted to talk about Michelle. Why did you run away from Michelle's apartment? Because I'm a runner. Not a talker, I understand. If a talker had been compromised the way you were, he would have lied himself past me. That other guy spoke to you like you were a cop. I don't dig cops. I'm a private investigator, and you don't have to dig me, Mr. Rome. Just tell me whether the book helped you. What book? Michelle's address book. I never saw it. Eric, I have reason to believe that Michelle is in serious trouble. Look, I got 28 animals I gotta feed. I don't have time to talk. Eric, you did uh, go back and break into the apartment to tidy up. I was just trying to find Michelle. When's the last time you saw her? Thursday night. Listen, if I knew anything, I'd tell you. See, these last few weeks, well, we really hit it off. Including Thursday night? Especially Thursday night. No sign of her now for five days. I thought she might be out with some other guy whose number would be in that book. Started calling the M's. Why don't you get the book and leave that to me? Look, she's my girl. I'm going to handle this my way. You took that address book. Let's see, that's uh, breaking and entering, possession of stolen property, possible interference with a criminal investigation. Okay. Okay. Okay, baby. Uh, come on, baby. Come on, come on, come on. Get down here. Thanks. I'm glad I didn't have to go hunting for it. Oh, there's nothing stranger than someone else's kitchen. Oh, I bet. 
bet those roses could use some water. Still a watchful guardian, I guess? Oh, Amy's back. I was just going to knock. I was I going to see if I could be of any help. Sounds like a good idea. Okay, huh? Oh, Argus. Oh, Mr. Jones, come in. How are you? Argus, the flowers are from you, aren't they? I hope you like them. I guess you got the key I had made for you. You're very thoughtful. Well, I just want to welcome you home. Thank you. <laughs> Strange young man. <laughs> Can we offer you anything, Mr. Jones? Oh, no, thank you. Any words yet on Michelle, Mr. Jones? Well, I'm afraid not, Amy, but I think I found something that you lost. My door keys? Where on earth did you find them? Amy, are you sure that you didn't open your door that night, step inside, and then remembering something you left in your car, stepped out again, and then you took your phone? I'm positive. How could I forget something like that? Do you or Michelle have a pair of old brown shoes with laces? Uh, it's hard to tell these days, but I would say uh, men's shoelaces. No? Why? I found one in here, and it's uh, kind of like finding a billiard table in the honeymoon suite. You, you got to wonder what it's doing there. Maybe Argus. He let himself in with the roses. Well, I've got to get back to work, and I've got that appointment with the vet. We've got a very sick Doberman on our hands. Go ahead, dear. We'll, we'll be all right. All right. Amy, I just want you to know that you're going to have the best of care, the finest specialists, whatever it takes. I know that. Thank you. Bye, bye honey. Bye. Bye. Bye, Mr. Jones. Now, don't worry about us. I'll call you later at the office. Good. Amy, this lamp on the end table, how'd it get broken? It isn't. I mean, that lamp's brand new, Mr. Jones. Well, there's a piece broken out of the base here. Were you going to glue that back in? Uh, if that lamp's been damaged, I just don't know how that happened. Mr. Jones, what are you inferring? Well, it's just possible that things went on in here that uh, we don't know anything about yet. Barnaby's told me how you teach those little ones to swim. That must be very rewarding work. I'm sorry you have to wait here so long, huh? Let me see how he's doing. The stain on this piece of lamp is blood, all right. AB negative, the rarest. Well, that rules out Amy. She's type O. What about Michelle? Barnaby, Mrs. Benedict is so despondent already, I was afraid if I asked her, she... Well, we got to know. The sooner the better. I was kind of hoping you'd handle it. Well, did you find anything? I, I, I'm sorry, I'm getting very anxious. Oh, nothing conclusive, Mrs. Benedict. Well, I meant to ask you, does Michelle have any scars, any uh, identifying marks? That's an ominous question. Oh, uh, this is just for our office file. Oh, well, yes, there is a scar. Michelle had a serious operation a few years ago. Oh, what was the nature of the operation? She was in an accident. She suffered a ruptured spleen. I, I was very worried about her. It was really touch and go for a while. I suppose there was a lot of internal bleeding. Did she have many transfusions? Yes, that's what made it so serious. Her blood type is very rare, AB negative.
See why I don't lock my door. He gets loose once in a while. Anything I can do for you? I'll let you know. Perfect match. Take a look for yourself. See how the threads fit together? This means the shoelace that you found in Eric's shack. Matches the one that I found in Michelle and Amy's apartment. Well, you can add to that what I came in to tell you. Lieutenant Hager returned your call. Eric Rome does have a record. Two counts of assault. That makes him a pretty good suspect. Yes, and he knows that, too. That's probably why he set the cat on you. Betty, that number in Michelle's address book that didn't have a name attached. Oh, yes. The Valley Vista Motel. was that young lady last registered here? Devious, Mr. Jones, the way you worded that question. The inference is that I have seen her. And now you want to know when and how often. Neat the way you avoided the question, Mr. Strather. You're more than just a concerned parent. Private investigator. We're a motel in a very romantic setting, Mr. Jones. In my business, we have professional ethics. And in mine. We know how to honor a confidence. Now, I could plant myself in your lobby or down there in the pool and whip out this photograph and start asking all sorts of questions. All right, all right. I noticed her. I mean, what man wouldn't? Stunning girl. Who was she with? No one. She was alone. You sure? We always notice a stunner like that when she registers alone, Mr. Jones. Well, couldn't uh, somebody have uh, come up and joined her in her room later? It's possible. Mr. Jones, some of our guests use great discretion. This is a community of thousands of familiar faces, and it's quite possible that some companion came to a room while she was here and left before she checked out. I have no idea who the gentleman was. Excuse and me. I... Hello, Eric. What are you doing here? Got as much right here as you do, Jones, so lay off, huh? I'd like to. But how do I know that anonymous visitor in Michelle's room here wasn't you? I came here for the same reason you did. I told you. I got through calling the M's in her book. I found this number in there. I found something, too. I found the other piece of this shoelace and a pair of your shoes in your closet. Well, so what does that prove? Could prove that you were in the girl's apartment the night Michelle disappeared. Forget it, Jones. I don't even own a pair of laces that color. And how'd they get in your shoes? 
But somebody must have planted them there. My door's always open. You know, you wandered in, didn't you? You expect me to believe that? Nobody's ever called me a liar, old man. It's always the first time for everything, Sonny. Not unless it comes frozen. It's your favorite dish and you don't have half the ingredients? Oh, I should have brought more groceries when I had your Uncle Paul here to carry them for me. Well, listen, it won't take me ten minutes to run down to that little market on the corner. And you won't mind being alone for just a few minutes, Amy, will you? Might as well start getting used to it. Amy? Besides, I need some cream rinse. I'll be shampooing while you're gone, okay? Well, I don't think you can drown in the bathroom sink. I'll be right back. Get something in, Helen? Who is it? Who's there? I know someone's here. Michelle? Is it you? Answer me. Who is it? Please. Please speak to me. Jones, unlock the door. Open it up or I'll break it in. What's the matter? Someone was just here, I know it. And someone went to the market. Wait here. He's gone now. What's to keep him from coming back? Amy. Just now you saw something, didn't you? No. Of course not. How could I see anything? I heard Amy call. I came to see if I could help. What happened? It was exactly as though she saw the pistol. I mean, actually saw it. Doctor, does that mean anything? Well, a gun usually symbolizes jeopardy. Mr. Jones, you may have found the last piece of the puzzle. Does the term hysterical blindness mean anything to you? No, but I once ran across a case of hysterical paralysis. I had a client confined to a wheelchair, a parade of specialists, could find nothing wrong with him. And one day, the wheelchair broke. He started to roll down a driveway toward a busy street. And his power to walk suddenly returned to him. 
That's right. The traffic represented Jeopardy. Just as your gun did to Amy. For one instant, self-preservation overrode her need to be blind. That must be it, Mr. Jones. And it explains why we haven't been able to find any physical damage that would account for her blindness. The way I figure, she saw something that frightened her, so she blocked out the memory of what she saw, along with the sight that had enabled her to see it. Exactly. And you think this relates in some way to her missing roommate? That's what I'm afraid of. It would explain, for one thing, why I found Amy's keys inside the apartment. I hear Amy unlocked the door, stepped inside, saw something, backed away, and took her fall. She may well have been blind before she fell. It also explains the blood on the lamp, the broken light bulb, and the hurried attempt to make it look as if nothing had happened in that room. So you think she saw Michelle and some kind of assailant? I think that Amy saw something terrible happen to Michelle. You had it up, Betty. There was a struggle in the apartment. Amy walked in on it. The intruder saw her. She saw him. And he has to make sure that she never gets a chance to identify him. If I'm right, he knows she's an eyewitness to whatever he did to Michelle. Why is he risking coming back when he knows the eyewitness is blind and has blocked out all memory of what happened? Because he knows that when Amy hears the truth, she will see and she will remember. Is it that simple? No. No, it isn't. Because Amy doesn't want to hear the truth. And she will fight to keep from hearing it. She'd rather be blind than remember the awful thing that happened to Michelle. Exactly. Oh, Barnaby, I forgot. The information you wanted on Argus Selby. He spent 1970 and 1971 in a San Diego mental hospital. He was committed by his mother after an attempted assault on a young woman. Wow. Well, isn't this interesting? From what you've told me of Argus, he hardly seems the type to have clandestine meetings in the Valley Vista Motel. Why not? Eric has his place out in Saugus. Argus can hardly entertain at home because he lives there with his mother. Well, then it's a good thing your aunt insisted that Amy move out to the beach house. At least those two women aren't alone in that apartment. If you hadn't scared off that prowler... You know, Betty, Amy has all the answers. It's my job to find the right question. on location with eight of my animals. It goes Monday. I'll be able to pay you all the back rent two weeks after that. Now, at which time you'll be another month overdue? Two or three lousy weeks is all I'm asking. Now, look, I'll give you three more weeks to come up with it, and that is it. Who's following who today, Joan? Eric, I want you to stay around a while. Sure, why not? Mr. Jones, I told you exactly what happened the night I fell. I know that, Amy. I wonder if you understand why I'm asking all these questions. To a point. But you seem to think that I know more about what happened to Michelle than I'm telling. It's just possible, Amy, that you know more than you realize. You're not making any sense. Amy, listen to me. If it sounds like I don't believe you, or that I'm trying to trick you, please trust me when I say that my only interest is in finding Michelle or in helping you. Will you, will you believe that? All right. Now, how did you and Michelle get along? Great. 
Oh, she's a, a lot more uh, aggressive and, and outgoing than I am, but I admire that in her. And no big arguments. Mr. Charles, this is taking a rather bizarre turn. I'm trying to establish that Amy was very fond of Michelle. Now, let's go back to the night of your accident. You told me that you had the key to your apartment in your hand. Yes. I think that you opened the door. I told you I didn't. You stepped inside. No, I was never inside. And you heard something, something that sounded like a struggle. There wasn't. I, I, I didn't go inside. You were scared. Matter of fact, you were terrified. That isn't the way it happened. You screamed. You dropped the key where I found it. Oh, please stop it. And then you turned and ran. Make him stop, please. It's all lies. Please stop. Mr. Jones, you're going much too far. My wife is right, you know. I, I think Amy's one to another. Play kind of rough, don't you, Jones? Could we uh, go into another room, please? to my questions confirms what the doctor has already told you folks, that her blindness is hysterical. I keep trying to bring the truth into focus and she just won't face it. It seems to me you're exploiting our niece to solve your case. Now, it, it does come off that way, Jones. Maybe a certain amount of truth in that, but I'd like to leave here with my case solved, but what's more important, with Amy's sight restored. It all sounds very far-fetched. Your niece is in jeopardy. Whoever it was hiding in her apartment isn't going to call off his plans just because you moved her out here. There's someone out there. Argus Selby, were you expecting him? Heavens no. Oh, now he has the dogs upset and one of them's sick. Now, I'll take a look at the dogs. I'll go see what Argus is up to. You come with me, Eric. Lose your way, Argus? Mr. Jones. No. I just thought I'd visit Amy. It's just me, honey. Oh. You startled me. I didn't hear you come in. Where's your aunt? Making some tea. Now, this has been pretty difficult for you, hasn't it, Pigeon? I just don't know what Mr. Jones wants me to say. Well, maybe we'll just call it quits on him. Can we? Now, when was I ever able to say no to you? <laughs> You're the greatest uncle in the world. <laughs> say, you know, what does it for me when I've been through the ringer? What? A nice, long walk. Sounds like a wonderful idea. Take a look outside. Uncle Paul. 
Mr. Jones said that the doctor had a long talk with you and Aunt Ellen. Yes. Helped us to understand what's happened to you. It's called hysterical blindness. Tell me about it. It's really kind of complicated. Please. Well, the one thing I keep remembering is how your blindness may have been caused by the sight of someone very near and dear to you doing something. Something has shocked you. Something that shattered your image in that person. That would be Michelle. According to the questions Mr. Jones keeps asking me. That's right. Michelle was very dear to you. Who she would keep saying was. Didn't you, Amy? Just as you saw the pistol when I put it back in my holster. Your uncle led you to the edge, didn't he? I don't know what you mean. Did you know how close you were? No, I... Uncle Paul? You saw what happened to Michelle. No, that's not true. You unlocked your apartment door. You let yourself in. You dropped the key. Stop it. I didn't. That's not the way it happened. Oh, please make him stop. You saw Michelle. You saw a struggle. The apartment was in a shambles. You saw a man there, Michelle's killer. You saw him, Amy, just as you're seeing him now. It was you. It was you. You tried to make it look as if Eric did it. You even planted the shoelaces on him. Amy, she was going to stop seeing me because of that kid. She'd fallen in love with him. I couldn't let her go. She threatened to tell your aunt. You killed Michelle. You murdered her. Take him to my car and stay with him. Let's go home now, Amy. <laughs> <laughs> 